Hello and welcome to this video in our Australian Speculative Fiction Lecture Series. In this video, I will explain the very concept of speculative fiction. Well, at least I will try to do so. In my own preparation for this video, I have drawn largely on Marek Orjevic's entry on speculative fiction to the Oxford Research Encyclopedia of Literature. It is an excellent starting point to get more familiar with a variety of literary theories and concepts, and its broad but often very detailed articles will not only explain the respective theory, but also quote the key scholars in each field. So if you have to look up a certain concept or theory, I'd certainly recommend giving it a try. Before we delve into the topic proper of this video, I will give you a short overview of what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to address the origins of the term speculative fiction, as well as its various meanings. I will then go through a couple of possible subgenres that can be categorized as speculative fiction, before moving on to the problems and advantages that surround the term. Finally, I will talk about how we use the term in this lecture series and why. So, let's find out where the term originally comes from. It was first used in 1941 by Robert A. Heinlein and then popularized in 1947 in his essay on the writing of speculative fiction. Early on, it was often associated with more high-quality works of science fiction. Literary science fiction, if you will. To an extent, this meaning is still in use today. Frequently, Authors, and more often the publishing industry, will use the term speculative fiction to signal that the text in question is not something as vulgar as fantasy or sci-fi, but a so-called literary text, worthy of discussion. Of course, this is not what we mean when we use it. We firmly believe that both fantasy and sci-fi, as well as other speculative subgenres, are perfectly valid research interests with a host of interesting and rewarding texts to read and analyse. But the existence of so many different meanings of the term makes it necessary for us to talk about what speculative fiction can mean and what it will mean for us over the course of the lecture series and this research project. And we've seen now, when we talk about speculative fiction, there's not an easy way to tell immediately what we are talking about because there are at least three things we could mean and that's even in addition to the speculative fiction as literary disguise meaning that we talked about before. Now our first meaning of speculative fiction is a subgenre of science fiction that deals with human rather than technological problems. This is sometimes seen as more literary, as it often deals with questions of ethics and morality, though of course a science fiction text with a highly elaborate technological novel can ask much the same questions. Our second possible meaning is a genre distinct from and even opposite to science fiction in its exclusive focus on possible futures. This is close to what Margaret Atwood means when she uses the term as she views her own fiction as extrapolating from current events what could realistically become true at some point. To me, this seems to be a bit tricky as well. We can't really say what will or will not be possible. Don't forget that, after all, Star Trek predicted mobile phones. Last, but certainly not least, the term speculative fiction is ever more frequently used as a supercategory for all genres that deliberately depart from imitating consensus reality of everyday experience. This is how we understand and use it, as it allows us to compare and juxtapose our wide range of Australian speculative texts in productive ways. Before I explain in a bit more detail how and why we use it, let's take a brief look at the many, many genres that speculative fiction can incorporate. Well, what have we got here? There's fantasy with unicorns, science fiction with uh, 
foreign planets and alien worlds and so on. There's gothic and horror. Not quite sure why the little icon here is a meteorite, but I suppose that's cosmic horror for you. We have magic realism, and we also have utopian and dystopian texts. And that's only the main categories we use as broad guidelines in our lecture series. But that doesn't mean we won't come across any others as we study Australian speculative fiction. For example, there is weird fiction, post-apocalyptic fiction, ghost stories, superhero tales, zombie tales, alternate history, steampunk, slipstream, fractured fairy tales, the aforementioned cosmic horror, and so much more. So the term speculative fiction can be very broad and can have multiple meanings. Its very flexibility can be a great advantage, but that isn't to say that there aren't disadvantages too. Let's start with the positives, though. Some writers, especially those of colour or other quote-unquote minority identities, use the term speculative fiction because it does not have a colonial or imperialist history like the genres of fantasy and science fiction, which have been traditionally dominated by white male voices. Fantasy and science fiction, especially in their most traditional forms, can also reinforce certain colonial narratives, such as the evil other being located in the East and other associated Orientalist tropes, or the frequently employed narratives of exploration that actually feature both in fantasy and science fiction stories. It's also a useful term because it subverts dominant Western notions of reality. Speculative fiction does not evoke the same connotations as fantasy. It is less distanced from reality and focuses on the speculative element, as in it contains speculation about the world that could be true but doesn't have to be. Likewise, it doesn't have to be entirely fantastic. It also covers a whole lot of creative storytelling that can oppose global capitalism and other oppressive forces effectively through its many different ways of playing with what is usually considered consensus reality. And then it's also just a useful umbrella term for a variety of related genres that do have vastly distinct features of their own, but can still be classed together productively. However, its multiple meanings can also lead to the term speculative fiction being a bit vague and in need of much clarification. After all, I'm using this video to explain how we understand it, so it's apparently necessary. Its broadness, even when limited to our preferred use as an umbrella term, can also mean that the texts compared within this category can end up being far too different after all, thus rendering productive analysis at best difficult, at worst impossible. Furthermore, as I've alluded to before, it can be used to cover or hide genres that are deemed lesser, such as fantasy or horror, when these genres do not in any way deserve such treatment. Finally, it is also still a term derived from Western literary criticism, and as such has perhaps an undue Western lens in its analyses. There are probably more arguments against and in favour of the term speculative fiction, and I will not pretend to have covered this in its entire variety. I'll leave it up to our students and viewers instead to come up with their own arguments. Well, well, now we can finally get to the really dicey stuff. How do we use it? And by we, I mean of course myself, Bettina Borger, and my colleagues Lucas Matala and David Kern, as well as our student assistants involved in this research project, which, after all, has Australian speculative fiction at its very heart. To borrow from Ortievich, we use the increasingly widespread understanding of speculative fiction as a term for the entire extremely diverse field of non-mimetic narrative fiction. This allows us not only to cover a broad range of subgenres in our project, but also to cover a wide spectrum of narrative media, which we find incredibly rich and fascinating. Rather than only covering traditional literature, we also look into drama, radio, film, TV, computer games, and so on. 
And we also cover a number of formats within literature, such as the short story, the picture book, the comic book, the graphic novel, and poetry. You can probably see now why we use speculative fiction. It is a convenient umbrella term to cover many genres, all of which we are interested in. It allows for certain flexibility, not just in what media, narratives and formats we can use, but also in dealing with texts where the relationship to reality is not entirely clear. Speculative fiction allows us to also cover texts which may be intended as depicting reality, just a speculative one, rather than only fantastic texts. This makes the term highly adaptable for Western as well as non-Western texts, which defy mainstream Western and Enlightenment versions of reality, without necessarily making a judgment as to whether a given text is true or not. We rather take the approach that reality really is multiple, and that even ostensibly fantastic texts do make certain statements that have an impact upon reality at the very least. After all, even the most outlandish fantasy can be and has been used to critique politics, society and so on. In short, speculative fiction today refers to a global phenomenon of non-mimetic traditions from around the world whose contemporary ethnic examples often articulate multicultural reality better than the historically white and predominantly anglophone non-mimetic genres. And this is why and how we use it. And now, hopefully, you will too.